I really do like to experiment and to try different bread recipes from all over. This recipe is really straightforward and easy to make, even though some people say it's really complicated. Today on Jay's World Kitchen, I'm going to show you how to make French bread. And really, it is quite simple. It doesn't take a lot of effort, and you can have this ready in no time. For this, you're going to need two cups of warm water, a tablespoon of yeast, two and a half teaspoons of sugar, five cups of flour, and I'm just using all purpose, two and a half teaspoons of salt, a little bit of olive oil, and an egg for doing an egg wash. It really is straightforward. And we're gonna start off, as always, by taking our warm water and adding in our sugar and our yeast. Give that a good stir. And we're gonna just set that aside for about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, just until that yeast starts to foam up. And while that's doing that, into our mixer bowl, we're going to put approximately two of our cups of flour and our salt. And once our yeast has started to bloom, we're going to start our mixer and slowly add that in. And that's just for the first two cups. And once that sort of started to come together, we're gonna to start adding in our flour about a half a cup at a time. Now, we may not get all the way to five cups, or we may go a little bit over, but basically five cups is your benchmark, and we'll go from there. Now every now and then you are going to have to stop your mixer and scrape down the sides until that first little bit of flour starts to come together into a very loose dough. Now to figure out how much flour you actually need. What you want is you want a dough that is smooth but not sticky. Now this dough is still sticky so we are going to add more but we're at about uh, three and a half nearly four cups now and so I'm going to add another half a cup in here and keep mixing. We're not going to knead this for very long but we are going to mix it until it's smooth. Now, if you're using a mixer like I am, the way to tell when your dough is about ready is when it starts to clean off the sides of the, the bowl and they should be com almost completely clean and your dough becomes very, very smooth. Mine's not quite there yet, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit more, but not a half a cup, probably about a third of a cup, if that, um, of flour to the slot and see how we go from there. And again, the sides of the bowl are starting to come clean, but it's still a slightly sticky dough. So I'm going to add a little bit more of our flour and mix it up. Now, if you are doing this by hand, it'll be very easy to tell because obviously the dough will stop sticking to your hands. But in a stand mixer, you want to make sure that it is getting to that point where it's no longer sticking to the sides of the bowl. And now we've got to the point where our dough is no longer sticky, as you can see. Um, and that's the perfect time for this. So we're going to stop mixing it right now. And I literally have about a half a cup left of my flour. So that means I've used about four and a half cups of flour to make these French loaves. And now I'm going to take um, another clean bowl and we're going to take some olive oil and just spread that around. No kneading or anything like that. It's really, really simple. We're just going to put that in there and make sure it's nicely coated in that olive oil. And now we're going to cover that with a towel and leave that to rise for anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes at very least, um, but anywhere up to an hour until it's about doubled in size. Now my dough has been rising for just about an hour and it's definitely doubled in size. It's quite a nice height and what we're going to do now is we're going to turn that out onto quite a well floured surface we're just going to slightly deflate that 
and then we're going to roll it flat a little bit and roughly divide it into two. Set one of those aside. And we wanted to try and actually roll this into a rectangle or as close to it as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect and it definitely does not have to be very thick or very thin. You're not trying to get a certain thickness here, but you do want more of a rectangle than a weird shape if you can. And those can be a little picky that way. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take your dough rectangle or close to it and you're very easily and very simply going to roll it up onto itself. Try to make sure that there's as little air in there as possible all the way and obviously on the long side like that. When you get to the end here we're going to just try and carefully crimp that end and again we're trying to make sure that we get as little air in there as possible all the way down to the end and then take the ends and we're simply just going to Put that up onto the top like that and the same on the far side and then we're going to put that onto a regular baking sheet just like that with that crimp side down like that and now we're going to repeat that for our second loaf And again, like I said, these don't have to be perfect. The end result's still gonna taste the same. And again, we're rolling the wide, longer end as tightly as we possibly can. And we're just going to crimp that seam together from the one side. And just light pinches do it all the way down and that end over again like that and like that and once again putting that with our crease side facing down onto a baking sheet. And now we're gonna leave that to rise for between 30 to 60 minutes. Again, uh, doesn't really matter here, you, this can actually rise a little bit longer, but about a quarter of the way through that rise, you want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And our two loaves have risen rather nicely. And what we're going to do now is we're going to very lightly brush the top with just an egg wash. So it's just a, a beaten egg. Um, and what this is going to do is going to give us a nice crust. Now you can shape these a little smaller if you prefer a larger loaf. I kind of like this because it's really good for a sort of snack type size sandwich. It's something to quell that hunger before a meal. And once those are nicely coated, we're just going to score across the top using a very sharp knife. It doesn't have to be very deep. You just want to cut 
a couple of lines across like that. Now you can actually do this before you let it proof for the second time, but we're just doing it now. And you don't want to go too deep because you don't want to deflate your loaves. Just like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pop that into our 400 degree Fahrenheit oven. And at the same time, we're going to do very much like we did when I made my no need bull recipe. We're going to throw some water into a pan that we've had in there preheating as well. So it creates steam while this bakes for between 17 and 23 minutes, just until it's golden brown. Now, if you find that it is browning a little too fast, a little faster than that, what you will want to do is you'll want to drop that temperature down to 375 and cover the bread with tin foil, but 17 to 23 minutes and they should come out perfectly golden brown. And I have to tell you, both loaves look absolutely amazing. The smell is incredible. Um, there's a nice, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a nice little knock on that bread and I'm going to get a nice slice here. Oh. Just going to take off the end. I really do like the crumb on that bread. It looks amazing. And cut myself, it's so fresh and so warm still. I'm excited for this. Nice and soft and springy bread. Mmm. Now that is wonderful. Nice and warm, uh, very, very soft. Like I said, the, the crumb is just about perfect on this. You've got to try this. And if you do, I'd love to hear from you how this turned out for you. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and remember to turn on notifications so that you know when my next video drops. Remember too, that you can follow me on all of my social media, and those links are below in the comments section as well. If you would like to try my no need bread recipe, you can click on this link right here. And if you'd like some more of my breads, buns and pastries recipes, click on this playlist right here. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy eating.